Now, just because you have data outside your frame of sight doesn't mean you can't bring it in. For example, if you manage all of your job listings inside of your Notion workspace, you can actually sync Notion and Framer together to display that content on your site. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Let's go. Okay, so here we have a simple Framer project and you can see I've already kind of got the bones of how I want this sort of like job board on my website to look. So I've got kind of like a, a page here which will make our collection list, which will sync to our Notion data. And I also have a page which is going to be for the listing itself. Okay, so first things first is to actually sync the content from my Notion over to the Framer CMS. So what I'm gonna do is open up the CMS here. I'm actually going to open a plugin and we're gonna search for the Notion plugin. And essentially what we're gonna do is create a synced collection. Now you can call this collection whatever you want. I'm just gonna call it my Notion database and we'll click on create. Now, if this is your first time connecting Notion, you'll be prompted to sign in with, well, Notion. And then once you've done that, you'll actually be prompted to connect a database. Now, in order for this to work, you actually need to set the connection inside of Notion first. So here inside of Notion, I've actually got a database set up with all of my sort of job listing information. Now, what I can do is actually go up to the three dots, go down to connections and make sure this is connected to Framer. Now, once this is done, I can go back to Framer and I'll actually be able to select that database from the list here. So once I select my job listings, I'll click on next and then it will ask me to import my content and you'll see it's already kind of picked up the properties that we're going to import and I can set the field type to what that is as well. So if it's just going to be some plain content, I can set that to be so. So for example, the job description here, I don't want it to be formatted text. I just want it to be string, which will just be text. And then I can click on import from job listings. And just like that, you can see that all of my content has now been imported to my Notion CMS, meaning there's now a sync between my Notion and my Framer. So if I go back to Notion here and say, update the status of my product designer role and set that to closed, then if we go back to Framer here, re-click on sync, you'll now notice that updates just like so. Now, unfortunately, one of the annoying things with how synced collections work in Framer is that you can't actually automatically sync this. This has to be a manual thing. So essentially, anytime you make an update to your Notion CMS, you also have to update it in the Framer CMS. But now that all of our content is actually connected inside a Framer, we can actually go ahead and start to wire up our website. So I'll go to the insert menu here and we'll drag in that collection, which is gonna be called our Notion database. And I'm gonna put it right here and you'll start to see it's already pulled in my content, which is good. And I've already got some placeholder sort of cards here. So I'm actually just gonna replace that with the content within my collection list here. And you'll see it's kind of duplicated one for each of my items within my CMS. And we'll go ahead and we'll set the width of this to be filled. So it takes up as much space as possible. And we'll do the same on the parent frame as well. Okay, and we can get rid of this placeholder for now. Now we have a bit of an overflowing issue. So we'll just set the height of this right hand container to be auto. So it automatically fits the content. And let's also change the gap between our elements here as well. So let's actually shrink it down. Now inside this collection list here, I can actually select certain elements on the canvas and tie that content to dynamically sync to the CMS itself. So you notice if I kind of select the title here, I can go down to content where there's this little plus, and I can actually set that to be a variable within my CMS collection. So in this case, we'll set it to be the job title. And now you will notice it's automatically updated for each field. Now, what I'm actually going to do on this text here is I'm gonna set the width of this to be fixed so we can actually have some better alignment. And we'll set this little pill placeholder here to also be set to the variable of our department. And we'll make that display option. Okay, this looks really good. And we'll also set the location in here as well. And essentially what I wanna do is make it that when I click on one of these cards, it's actually going to open up that page. Now what we can do is we'll go ahead and we'll create a new page for our CMS detail page. So we'll select our Notion database and we'll create that as a detail page. Now we'll just delete all of this for now because I already have the design that I want to use, which is here. So I'll just copy this and we'll paste it in like so. 
And let's get rid of this random padding that's going on. Okay, that looks good. We'll also set the content here to match the job description. And we've also got the ability to set the status. So what I'll do is set that to be the variable of our status. And we're going to go display option here, but we can actually take this a step further and get a little bit more creative. And we're actually gonna make the color of this change depending on whether the job is opened or closed. So if it's open, we want it to be, well, green. So how we'll actually do this is we're actually just going to draw a new frame here on the canvas and we'll make sure that it's square. So we'll set it to be say 10 by 10 and we'll make this as round as possible. And what I'm going to do is click on fill here. We're going to set the variable to be the status and we're going to go convert. And essentially we're gonna make it that when it's set to open, we're gonna set it to be green. So we'll make this a green color. And we're gonna make it, we're gonna add another condition that when it's set to closed, that it's going to be red. So depending on whether this job listing is open or closed, it's going to show a certain color. And then if there's nothing to show at all and it can't find anything, we'll just make it a bit of a gray. So let's actually test this. So we've got our UX researcher. So I'm going to go back to Notion and inside my table here, I'm going to set this to be closed. And now I can go back to my CMS and we'll just press on sync. And as you can see, that status is updated here. And then when I go back to my page, it now shows as closed, but every other listing should show as open. Okay, so this is looking really good so far. Let's now go back to our homepage here and let's enable some links for our collection. So now we'll select the link and we can actually link that to a CMS detail page now that we've got one created. So now I can actually click on this. So I could select my junior growth analysis and you'll notice it'll take me to that job listing. So already we've done a lot. Let's actually go a step further here and do some filtering. So it makes sense that on this page that if a job listing is closed, we just don't show it at all. So for example, here inside our database, we don't wanna actually show the UX researcher on this page, even though it's being synced to our collection, that's because there's no job listing available. So what we'll do is select our collection list, go to filters and we'll select the field, which is going to be status. And then we're gonna make it that when it equals open, that it's only going to show items that are set to open. Now I could change this to be closed and you'll notice it'll only show items that have the state of closed. But in this case, we only wanna show the open items in our collection. So we can take this a step further and actually add some dynamic filtering to our CMS collection here. Now this is possible using a third party plugin called Superfields, which I'll leave a link to down below. And we're going to simply grab in the Superfields component here. I'm gonna go back to my page and I'm just gonna paste this in within my right hand column. And what I'm actually going to do is grab that uh, collection list that I created. I'm actually going to move it off the canvas for now. So I'm actually gonna put this to the top of my page and we'll move it over here. Let's shrink that in. Okay, now inside this CMS collection here, I'll just set the width to be 100%. And what I'll actually do is start connecting this. So firstly, I'll sync my collection. So I'll drag that to the collection list, which sits offside the canvas and we'll set that to our collection list. And I can also design an empty state here. So when there's say no items found, we could have uh, a, a bit of a, you know, a placeholder image here. So we could say no items found with a little sad face and we'll just center that. And then inside this component here, we'll also set that to be our empty state, which is called no found. Now, if I go back to super fields here, I can now select the filter component and I'll go ahead and I actually paste that on my page. And now I can simply connect this as well. So we'll set that to be our collection so it knows what it's referring to. And now we'll go into setup and we'll actually set a certain field that we want to filter by. So in this case, I'm actually gonna filter by department. So someone can quickly filter through all of my CMS items that have a certain department attached. So what we'll do is go back into setup here within the component and we'll label this department. And that's literally all I need to do. So now you'll notice when I preview this, we've got our dropdown and I can select the department and it's gonna filter based on that. Now I can also go a step further and make this buttons if I want to. 
and we'll tweak the styling here slightly. Okay, great. So now when I preview this, you'll notice that all of my collections are working correctly. And if there's not a tag available, then it's not actually going to show anything at all. And the last thing I need to do is actually fix the layout here inside this collection. So I'll click on advanced and then we'll just enable stack layout. And now you'll notice when I preview this, I can filter between all my different tags here and I can click into my role. And again, all this is now tied as a sync collection inside of Notion. So anytime I make an update here inside of Notion, whether I change the status, whether I change the name, so maybe we want to hire a senior software engineer instead, all I need to do is go back to Framer, click on sync within that collection. And then just like that, everything gets updated here inside of Framer. And that's how you scale Notion and Framer together. Now this same technique is usable with platforms like Google Sheets and Airtable as well. But as you can see, it can be really, really powerful for actually using your content or data that exists inside another platform and you wanna keep it there and actually bring it over to the Framer CMS. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you want more Framer content like this, consider subscribing to the channel because we're putting out new Framer content every single week. And if you're interested in mastering Framer, check out my A to Z course on the Ultimate Framer Masterclass. All the links will be down below, including Superfields, which we used in a demo for this tutorial. But until next time, I'll catch you later.